Hey, what's going on guys? We're trying new samples. I don't know if you guys like it, but if you do, let us know. Like a new intro. Yeah, new samples <laughs> of intro. Sorry, but I didn't I want to use like myself. one of your songs. Nah, I don't think so. I think not right now. I definitely... Because my whole thing is, why would you jeopardize the integrity of something that could potentially be really great if thought out? Just... Oh, you mean like you want to specifically make a song for this? Like an intro, not just use one to just use for now? Well, no, I prefer to use the best out there and if i can find the best and make it obviously not you know obviously not releasing a song like by putting a sample because of djs are they yeah. just remix samples of songs yeah. and just push them together how they see fit but i guess you know when you're making a sam when if you're gonna have an intro for something i wouldn't want to jeopardize how good it can be with just my own talent you know what i mean yeah, but it's like our podcast, so I'm like, you're such a good musician, so why wouldn't you want to use some one of yours? That's all. Because I don't limit the options that I make just for the sake of having my name on it. I lim- I, I want the best to be the best. I feel that. Um, but yes, I do hope in the future that I would create something that is just as good as, you know, our, our, our dear friend Dead Mouse. <laughs> but... um. To give a better intro right now, just for people who aren't listening or who have never listened to before. Yeah, so people who have never listened before, um, just want to introduce ourselves. Um, You are... Megan. And I'm Sam, and we are two adopted Peruvians who are living in Manhattan. Megan grew up in the suburbs of Minnesota. I grew up um, in Manhattan, uh, more specifically on the Upper West Side, and these podcasts that we will continue to do will be about our experiences growing up and our experiences that we live through day to day up until uh, right now here today as we record this podcast, so... Yeah, and if you can hear in the background, we have a seven-month-old Boston Terrier who is, <laughs> he's calming down hopefully right now, but. Yeah, all those people who have have who have who puppies or who had puppies will definitely understand the tones in our voice when we say he is seven months old, and there's a lot that comes with that. Uh, and there's also a lot of good, too. Um, but that actually leads us into kind of the point of topic that we maybe would like to talk about a little bit um, to bring into shed some light into the context of of what we're going to talk about. Um, I always grew up feeling caught in between two worlds. I grew up um, uh, the color of my skin is brown, but yet I. I didn't have any, my, I was adopted, so my, my parents were white, they were Caucasian, they were Jewish more specifically, and I grew up Jewish, and I never knew what it was like to grow up Peruvian in Peru, or out of Peru in New York City. There's a lot of Peruvians who grew up in New York City who have their biological parents and who come from Peru. Um, but I didn't share that. And so throughout my whole life, I always felt very lost in between two worlds. Um, not white enough to be white and hang out with my white friends and feel like I'm one of them, but not Hispanic enough to truly immerse myself in the Hispanic community and Hispanic culture or Latin culture. And, you know, it, it was tough. It was really tough to live my life um, that way. And the reason why I say that and the reason why it comes into context now is because we have a you know seven month old boston terrier and you know we both think that it's really important for for him to go outside and for him to play with other dogs and with that you know there comes a lot of unforeseen um interactions interactions complications you know just things that you don't really even even would have never thought about that you know you have to think about now and that actually take precedence in your life because it's important to you and um i think it was really funny the first time i went out to a dog park or i just went out on a walk in general first of all when you get a puppy you have to 
immunize them and make sure that they're safe against um, things such as like eating rat or mouse poop or something, you know. And so he had to go through like a series of immunizations and, before we could even take him out. And so when we finally could, we could take him on walks. He could be street legal, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Sam sat me down and was just saying, you know, I just want you to just want you to understand that you might come across some more specifically like older women who aren't very happy that he still has his balls and i was like what like what what does that matter you know and um wait did i say that or was i like you'll come across women who will be very territorial well (laughs) specifically you said about like his balls still having his balls because he's a puppy and he's a male and Uh, you're like worried that they might say something to me and that oh, I need yeah, to be yeah, prepared yeah, yeah. because I have a bit of a mouth and sorry sorry the way that you were saying that made it seem like they liked that he had balls and I'm like oh sorry I'm like, no uh, I think there's some miscommunication <laughs> no. sorry, sorry. um yeah so anyways um I guess I didn't even realize that that was going to be a problem only to kind of go to dog parks and kind of interact with people in different ways that we didn't expect definitely and um, yeah, even when I was telling you that, I didn't even really truly believe the extent of how impactful that would be um, in the coming weeks and, and month that months that we had Oreo. Mm-hmm. And I think it's even interesting, too, because uh, as we take Maya to parks and things, you know, there's that crazy, um, I don't know how, what you would call it, but it's like, you know, territorial parents, right? More specifically moms. Um, yeah. Like that, that like mama, mama bear vibe. And so, you know, I know you've kind of gotten into it with a parent because their kid was being horrible to Maya and you stepped in and like stood up for Maya. And so you've been around that. I mean, I remember where there was a kid and took Maya. We had gotten her these cute little, I think Barbie. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear him drink water in the background. <laughs> Oreo is his name. He's a spunky little guy. But anyways, there was these, these little girls. It's kind of off topic, but kind of in topic too. And uh, Maya had these pink little walkie-talkies. And for some reason, like, obviously they weren't, like, top of the line. We got them, like, nine ninety nine at the CVS. Mm-hmm. And some girl, she was trying to use them long distance. Maya had let her borrow them. And because they weren't working long distance, she came over and she's like, these things suck. And she threw them on the ground. And it was just kind of like, what, what do you do? Like, I went up to the girl and I took it back. I was like, you don't get to do that. That's not your toy. Yeah. And it's like, where, do, where, like, I'm, I'm not a mom, so I don't know how to navigate these situations. Like, do I go tell your mom? Do I tell her right now? I'm not trying to correct her or discipline her. Like, I, I don't know. And that just leads into the dog park and kind of coming in and everybody obviously is watching their dogs and Oreos, like I said, this spunky, energetic, like wildly happy, very friendly, just wants to jump up on you and just wants to say, hey. But of course, like we so the same a- same principle kind of like mm-hmm. applies from, you know, a, a child, which is, you know, one thing, obviously a child's a child, but with a dog too, um, like people view their do- pets as, as their children. And so with that said, right, is the same, same uh, mama and papa bear mentality too with uh, their animals and their dogs more uh, specifically. And um yeah, like you were saying, which brings us into um, a few uh, uh, conversations that we've had with uh, some of the dog owners in the neighborhood. And it's like, it's just weird. Um, like I was bringing up earlier about, you know, how I always felt like I never fit in. I always felt um, that I was the oddball and uh, no one would really would accept me. And that honestly has bled into my life a lot more than I maybe realized or ever realized or will continue to realize as I live my life. Um, With that said, it's kind of like uh, when I go to the dog park, um, I look a certain way. If I don't open my mouth, you'll think that I might be a dog walker or that I don't live there for whatever reason I'm there. And, um, and it just, that it's just a bummer because I think people, they look at me and they, they have their judgments on Mm -hmm. me and it just makes me sad because um, you know, they, they, like Megan, ha, you know, will probably tell you in a minute that, you know, sometimes they're not always so nice yeah. and it, and it just sucks. And let's just pause really quick too, for people who aren't living in New York city, because I never had this experience, um, growing up, like understanding like what a dog walker was, you know, being in the suburbs, we have yards. So you come, you let your dog out before you go to the bathroom or before <laughs> you let your dog out in the morning before you go to work. And then when you come home from work and 
they're running around you usually have a fenced in yard or we did uh for the most part and I didn't know about like dog walkers or like to be honest even like delivery men because when I was living there I mean seamless and grubhub was not even really existence till I came out to New York City which maybe around 25 26 somewhere around there um and so just to go off of that it was it's interesting coming here having brown skin and people curious about if you're a delivery I mean being here living in the upper west side I've had people ask me if I live in this building if I'm um like a a maid and it's really sad and I don't think people from other parts of the country understand that and I want to bring up another thing too that happened recently is when we were hanging out and instead of getting delivery Sam walked into a sushi place to go grab sushi and uh, do you want to tell that story because I feel like that's super relevant yeah yeah um kind of uh piggybacking on the overall arc of uh not fitting in and you know even being a a dog owner and facing people who you know have their judgments on your dog and have their judgments on your child and you know will have your their judgments on you as a customer and me you know pivoting off of what Megan was saying is that you know I one day was walking home with Megan and Maya and we were uh I was hungry and I decided to go into the local sushi establishment because, you know, I was like, why not? I'm out, you know. I didn't want to order it because it's pretty pricey, but a little cheaper when you go in and buy it. And I went in and there, I was waiting in line. There was somebody else, uh, another white lady, uh, kind of explaining to the uh, waiter or the cashier what she wanted specifically. And uh, she took her time and I was like, all right, you know, whatever, I'll wait, it's cool. You know, and then she was finished. And then the lady, for some reason, I got inclinations that the the Asian lady was not um, paying much mind. Yeah, the cashier was not paying much mind to me prior to uh, her helping the lady. She was in the middle of helping the lady. She looked over at me and saw me and acknowledged me and then continued to help the lady. When the lady was done, she obviously had her judgments because she didn't help me right after. She went to go take care of a few phone calls uh, of orders that came in and were coming in. And it was really frustrating because after that, I was like, okay, well, that's odd. Maybe, uh, but okay, fine. I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Maybe, you know, those calls were there waiting prior to her, uh, you know, helping this uh, lady. And after she took care of these phone calls, she proceeded to just jot down notes, like as if there was nobody else needing to be helped and she just had some free time and she just decided to maybe do some inventory and I was like now at that point I was kind of like dang all right this is really happening right now like, like am I, I not feel, here? I feel yeah like do I even exist like yo like and I started to get upset because I'm like I was like excuse me like and she she looked at me and she said oh um are you uh Grubhub uh can I like something about like the order number and I'm like no, I, I'm, I'm trying to place an order. And she's like, oh, okay. Uh, what you want? And I'm like, nah, that's, you know what? It's, I'm, too I'm, it's too late. And I told her like, you know what? Like, I don't appreciate you uh, making a judgment on me and assuming that I'm something when I'm not. And I said, you just lost a lot of money here. Because I'm never coming back here again. And I'm definitely never going to come here in person again. Because I ordered from here a lot. And I just like left. And they were just kind of like, whatever, whatever. Like, and I'm like, but... It really hurt you. It really affected you. Yeah, because as I'm walking home, I'm just like, dang, like, aren't we all in the same boat? Like, you know, this this, this, this Asian lady talking to this Hispanic dude, like, why are we doing this? Why are you, like, acting like this with me? Like, I know 100% that if we were in different positions, you would feel like, what the hell, dude? Mm -hmm. Like, I... Am I not like viewed the same just because of this color of my skin? It's like you would expect that from a white person, but not somebody who is a minority. And that just really like rubbed me like really the wrong way. And and it kind of goes back to what we were talking about with being a dog owner and going to these dog parks. Um, people you know, assuming being, people assuming that you're something like, and that you know you don't know how to talk. Like for instance. Um, you know, uh, I was with Oreo and there was this man who was leaving the dog park and I was walking in and I assumed that he was going to close the door because he was literally like opened it for me and 
literally I was going to walk in and only like three minutes later, I heard this man come out and yelling at me like, Hey, like, what's your problem? Like, why, why didn't you close the door? And I'm like, first of all, like, I don't know why you're, you're approaching me like that. Like, it's pretty hostile. Like, and Maya's there. And yeah, my, you know, my daughter's there. So I'm just kind of like, Whoa, take a step back, buddy. But like you were saying, my, my papa bear instincts came in and I'm like, Hey man, like, you want to yell at somebody you yell at the guy who didn't close the gate he's right over there mm-hmm. and he's like yo this is a community like uh yeah you gotta be careful like my, my dog wants stuff and i'm like dude i i did not know that door was closed like like i said like you saw me come in like i did not like i had assumed that it was like and mind you uh oreo got out prior to this the same guy leaving like he was opening the gate to take his dog out and my dog our dog came, ran out and I was like, whatever, it's whatever, you know, because it's, it's a double gate for, for those yeah. purposes, just just in case. And he's like, this is like you, this is a community area. Like, dude, like, how dare you? As like, you how dare you think that I don't care about this community? Yeah. Like, I care so much about it. Like, I was so angry, like, you know, when they were moving, you know, um, people who were addicts and who were homeless into this neighborhood. I was like, so like, kind of like potentially fearful of you know the ramifications of what could have came for that you know all that stuff went in my mind when he was telling me like kind of like how dare you not care about the community i'm like yo how dare you with all due respect like come at me like like you know i i don't care like sir i've lived here my whole life like this is like i bleed this 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 neighborhood like this is everything to me like dude yeah but i was like what you know and and i was like i kind of like you know said stuff and he kind of backed down and um you know all respectfully i didn't curse at him no no way um but he's like all right well next time and i'm like dude but then everybody turned and looked at you like and watched i was you the for problem the the and it just bothers me because i'm like i was this simple like quiet like dude who just walked into this like dog park minding my own obviously i know that my 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 our pup is a bit of a rambunctious dude and it was just it was just a bummer a bummer that that happened and i have a lot of just anger about that overarching feeling of not of being judged based on your skin color and um, that makes that honestly like it re- it makes me resent uh, delivery boys. It makes me resent people who are look like me. I don't I have my own reservations because of that. And it, and that idea, that thought like bothers the hell out of me to be compared. No, to think that negatively about my own brothers and sisters who are Mexican, who are Ecuadorian, who are Peruvian. And I'm sitting here thinking like stay away from me like dead ass like don't i don't want to be near you when i'm in the lobby because i don't want to be associated with you because you're a delivery boy and i'm not I, you know and that's the reality of it and and i've grown up like that you haven't you've experienced that um when you first came here but for me that was a way of life up until like my teenage years 13 years old i just remember walking in a restaurant going to the bathroom with my mom and some white lady came up to me and um she was uh, sitting down and she pulled me over and she said hey can i get another water and i'm like i don't work here yeah she was like oh my god i'm so sorry and it's it's wild because i didn't get mad at her i got mad at i guess the delivery boys the waiters unfortunately and it's a excuse me but it's a shitty feeling i hate feeling like that about people who look like me and where i come from it's such a such a effed up (laughs) mentality and i'm aware of it and i know it's horrible and i'm sorry if i offended anybody I by saying the, this but the overlying the theme is that you just want to be treated equally and it's hard because when there's people out there who do look just like you and they they have these jobs and things and you're you're like you said you're automatically associated and it's not that you hate these people or anything i just think it's it's crappy because you get like you said you get associated you get put into this group you get put into this like i don't know almost you're you're not trying to get put into that mindset though too or put into um a category i guess and you just want equality especially with where you live and it's not it's not a good feeling and um it's just very interesting i think that guy went out of his way to make you feel 
uh, well, I think he went out of his way at, to, to get mad at you in front of everybody to try and embarrass you because you were the only person of color there. And um, obviously at the rest of the people my at experience, the dog park. Yes, my experience with that is that most um, Hispanic people, they don't say anything. They let them talk. Um, I've seen it. We've seen it happen. Yeah. And they just, they're just quiet. Yeah. And um, for me, I'm definitely not quiet. Yeah. If somebody says something to me, I'm not, I'm not going to fight fire with fire. But I won't let somebody talk to me that way without having a response back to them. Mm-hmm. Without obviously cursing and really trying to conduct myself in a proper way of just letting them know. You know, because I, the second we curse, the second we curse, the second we like stoop to m- maybe they're cursing at us. But the second we stoop to that, then we're the angry brown people, you know, and that doesn't make us any any better. So I think how you approach things, it's very tactical. It's very education, like the way you talk. I don't know. I was going to say educational. Um, you, you just have etiquette in the way you talk and etiquette in the way you talk. And I think that's the most important thing. That's interesting. Uh, that's interesting that you say that because, um, as I actually don't think about that. You know, like when when I'm speaking up, I don't think like, oh, because I'm brown, like I have to. I just think of because I personally like subjectively don't want somebody to walk on me. Yeah. And the minute I let that happen, the minute it's all downhill, and everybody will walk on me. Yeah. And so, whenever I see something, I I speak up for myself. But now that you bring it up, I, I suppose, I guess the reason why I've never thought of that is because I've never myself in my adult years uh, fought somebody back with like anger and hostility to the point where I look like I'm a, you know, crazy like minority dude who just hasn't had an education, who doesn't know how to handle himself yeah. and who gets put in his, their place by like somebody being like, yo, right? look at you, You've you don't never... even know how to talk. Like, yeah. why are you? cursing like this like bro you're you're a get out of my way dude just stop talking to me yeah because like that's you know yeah ori is so crazy right now i can't calm him down but um i guess uh it's really interesting because then i go to the park and uh even today we had kind of made a pact today to go together um after a few incidents have happened you know i've been by myself and go take him um my job is a little bit more flexible so Um, I take them every day around the same time. And the reason I do is because we met some really cool friends at the park. Um, The park we go to is really community-based. People buy toys for the dogs to play with. They bring in water balls. Um, There's a dog walker who rakes, um, who just really takes care of the whole area. And I really love that. And so after talking to them and being around them, there's like a cute little Boston Terrier named Dottie that Oreo plays tug-of-war with. And what I love about the timing that we go usually during the day is because a lot of these dogs match Oreo's energy. So there's a small dog little kind of play place and there's a big one. And Oreo's been attacked multiple times at the big one. The reason that I bring him sometimes in there is because he has too much energy for some of these small older dogs. And um, I'm very careful with him. I watch him um, probably hover a lot more than I should, but I'm just also aware of my surroundings and, and the owners, the other pet owners, dog owners, and, um, oh man, he's and that, a blast. And that leads me to, like, that, it's like, it sucks because Oreo is, he's an alpha. The dude is nothing but muscle and skin. He's he is jacked. quick. He is smart. It's way smarter than any dog I've ever had. And he has his way with a lot of dogs. And if the dogs, if it doesn't go his way, it's because the dog is a lot bigger and a lot stronger and a lot older and knows his body better than Oreo does. Mm -hmm. And so Oreo's in this very, like me, like, you know, you is this very in-between state where he, you know, he doesn't really fit in. He kind of is in the middle of two worlds yeah and that obviously unfortunately breeds a lot of potential for for problems yeah and it's just a you know i don't mean to sound so doom and gloom or so pessimistic it's just a really frustrating feeling and i just wonder if anybody else feels the way that i feel the way that you feel Mm -hmm. about the neighborhood that they live in in new york city or anywhere else but it's just a really crummy feeling and i try so hard we try so hard to always stay upbeat and look at the silver lining of everything 
and because life it within itself is hard enough uh, mm -hmm. to handle and to go through and to throw that whole thing that not many people have to deal with because you know if you grew up hispanic and you were you know in that tradition i feel as though you might have a more of a sense of belonging with a specific always there's you know people who don't even with that being said but there's you know you have something there but yeah. to start off with like nothing like you know to start off with like being raised by a white family that you don't you know you're not blood related you know you don't have the same look the same feel the same even mm -hmm. Um, it's just tough, really tough. Yeah. And it's, um, it's interesting because the same thing kind of happened to me where I was once again at the dog park with Oreo, he was hanging out and <laughs> <laughs> bless you. Sorry. <laughs> um, there was another Boston Terrier there that looked really similar to him and so similar that was it Lily, it was Lily. So similar that they could have been siblings, um, the markings and everything, the body type, the size. And so I think a few people thought that. I had two dogs. There was a guy, he came, he was on his phone, he had glasses, and he, um, his dog didn't want to do anything. And that, that's the problem, not the problem, but that's just kind of what happens here, right? So <laughs> you have older dogs, you bring them into the smaller section, and they don't want to move. They just want to stand by their owner, they don't want to do anything. And then you have Oreo who's like, hey, let's play, hey, let's play, and puts their pa his paw on their back and is just like, hey, 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 just want to play. And so... Oreo was over by that dog and then Lily the other Boston Terrier was by that man's dog and Lily started really kind of messing with that dog and I can't control Lily that's not my dog so all I'm doing is I go to go pick up Oreo because I don't want him to start you know <laughs> once Lily starts I don't I know he's gonna kind of come in too so I go over and I pick up Oreo I hear this man mutter something under his breath but he was also on his phone so I didn't know if he was talking <clears throat> excuse me to me or not he said something about like fucking dog but once again, it's not my business. I'm not here to try cause problems. I'm just <laughs> on my lunch break, just trying to have but get my dog. But it does in. bother you. It does bother me. But I just try really hard to, all right, I'm going over here. You're psycho. I'm going over here. Well, then he moved to where I was and his dog followed. And then Oreo and Lily kind of started, you know, going back on his dog. And he grabbed his dog and he looked at me and he's like, I, look, no, what did he say? Oh, he said, that's your fucking dog. Learn how to control your fucking dog. Um, it picked up his dog, looked at me again, got close to me and said, you can stay here and I'll leave. I'm sitting next to an elderly man who we had talked to. And I'm also sitting next to Lily's uh, mom. And they're, they're kind of like looking at this dude, not saying anything. And I was just like, what kind of caught back? Yo, but I'm so happy I wasn't there because I would have been like, because yo, it was the same man. Yeah, because I've been like, hey, listen, man, you can't never. I don't know how you were raised. I don't know that your how your parents dealt with you, but you can never talk to another individual like that. Yeah. There are plenty of better ways to approach somebody if you have a problem. And I don't know why. You know, you do that, but like, you know, it's like one of those things, right? Like, you know, I wish I was there. <laughs> I know. And it was like, my problem is like, I like to talk back and I have a smart mouth and I was like, all right, thank you so much. And I proceeded to wave at him and he's like, your dog doesn't fucking belong here. He belongs in the bigger dog area. He's too fucking big. Oh, Oreo's, um, Oreo's 17 pounds. Um, he's pre pretty small. I mean, there's a lot of like Dalmatians and um, golden retrievers and giant dogs over there. So I, I don't know, but he proceeds to leave and I'm like, Hey, have a, have a great day. And I'm waving and smiling and he turns around and he's like, you, you, you're a nasty girl. And it just kind of like made me laugh. Cause I'm just like, all right, like, all right. Like, of course I want to say all these horrible things like you, you know, I'm not going to say I'm here, but, <laughs> it, but it's like, it's like one of those things where it's like, you're not saying anything wrong. It's like, Oh, like the dog should be in the bigger park. Like I would love that dude. But my dog gets beat up by the bigger dogs. Like, I'm yeah. so sorry. I'm caught in the middle here, and I don't really appreciate you cursing at me as if I don't know better because I'm doing my best to try and take care of my pup. And I know yeah. you would do the same if you were in a situation like me. And I don't know why you're coming at me like that yeah. because I'm here. And like, if it um, was uncalled for, if Oreo did something crazy like bite his dog or do anything crazy, then I would have been nothing but apologetic and 
you know, would have said what I needed to say um, in order to kind of keep the peace. But obviously he took it to a next level. But it goes back to what we were talking about, which is that perceived notion of who he thinks you are. He thinks yeah. you're this, you know, this horrible person who doesn't train their dog, who doesn't care if their dog beats up on another dog. Yeah, and thought that sad. those were they're my those both of the dogs were mine, and you know, fuck, like just ask me, just say like, hey, and people have done that before. And the whole They've situation been like, is shitty too because it's like, where was Lily's owner? You know, where was she to defend you? Where's to be like, hey, that's my dog and too. And that's like, the thing, like I don't know what I don't, it was interesting, right? It's a whole so mentality after, switch. After he left and he was like <laughs> flipping me off, and I was just like, you know, smiling and telling him to keep having a good day and whatever the case is. Um, Lily's mm. owner came up to me and was just like, wow, that was just like so uncalled for his anger was just so unjust i just i don't understand why he was so angry and um Dang, if i was there i've been like hey where were you i, I needed you like i know it and was she was within like t- 10 feet of me and the older guy was like yeah i don't know i mean what's that guy's problem your dog isn't your dog isn't too uh, big to be over here i don't i just don't understand and once again didn't didn't stand up but and all i can think of to myself is that if you know, the tables were turned, I would have stepped in. And I can't worry about those people in the moment because I, I just can't. I did continue to have a conversation with them. And I, you know, I was glad <laughs> that I had some people on my team um, at the end, even though. But uh, yeah, what do you what do you do? I didn't want to. Because for me, that's where I feel like so alone because like. And it's OK because I, I can live with that mm-hmm. because it's one of those things right in football, right, or in life, you know, you, you, you have to make the play in the moment. If you don't make the play in the moment, you're going to be kicking yourself all week yeah. until you get another opportunity. And so that's why I always try and say something when I can. And, mm-hmm. and the unfortunate thing about that is that you can potentially burn bridges. Like for me, yeah. I would have kind of like been a little bit hard on just being like, hey, like Lily's owner, like where were you? Mm-hmm. I really needed your help because your dog was a part of that, mm-hmm. that it, an, antagonized this, this dude's dog. And mm-hmm. I was here alone and you weren't defending me, like yeah. helping me at least. Like what's up with that? And just ask her and put her on the spot and i i would totally understand if she got upset with me being like whoa like he wasn't coming at me and i'm like well of course he wasn't coming at you because you weren't there and i was there he was attacking was yeah, and like yo take accountability for your dog and then obviously the reality probably of if that were to go down was i would be the outcast they'd yeah. be like yo, why are you so angry for it and i'm like well because it just happened to me it didn't happen to anybody yeah. else this dude just like cursed me out yeah. made me feel like a horrible person and i'm not a horrible person and right. it's like my god and the thing is like we go there on a daily basis so trying to keep you know somewhat of like a a good reputation is important because i don't want to be known as an outcast in in this place i go to and the people who we do talk to when we are there but that day was an off day i went at a different time of the day and so it, it happens but um oh yeah the, the reason but like why we you were saying too it's like i don't know like i dare i go back to the civil rights movement civil rights era where it's kind of like oh just 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 let them talk don't don't let them don't let them don't pay mind to them i know they're gonna say some mean stuff and like to like a like a, a african-american family you know mm-hmm. and just being like you know telling their their children like don't say nothing don't say nothing and they're like why they're, they're, they're being so rude to us i don't get it and now it's like kind of like you know we're in the we're in the current time you know and and what like the reason why i bring that up is kind of why do we have to choose what time we go to the park know, just to be like palatable to somebody else like no i choose to go to the park when i want to go to the yeah. park and i'm i don't want to feel like i'm scared to go to the park and i am scared to go to the park mm-hmm. and like that's just a effed up feeling yeah and i don't know what to do i don't know the answer it is. somebody knows an answer just <laughs> you know hit me up please because i'd love to know because i am trying my best to win an unwinnable situation and it just sucks because i don't i know you don't want to live our lives like we're the problem child we don't want problems we try and conduct ourselves at the best we can like do i have to dress up to go there to to have a certain amount of respect because I, because i work from home i don't dress up every day like i might wear the same thing two or three times uh, in a row like it i'm not especially if i'm not going to work out or anything so like it's, um even that is such a crappy feeling to, yeah to have to worry about that stuff and and obviously like i know a lot of people do worry about that stuff and and when you know try to compare themselves and try to be repra representable repra i can't i can't talk right now um I guess just look professional, right? And and come off with a certain way. Um, but 
I don't want to have to overthink things. I just want to be able to walk outside and not have to think about what I'm wearing um, and why I don't have to worry about like my attitude or how I am with other people is because I consider myself pretty nice. I, I don't get into any problems with really anybody. I don't start problems. I don't go looking for fights. And so it was interesting today when we were talking a little bit about um, your work and your coworkers and finding out some people kind of live in the same area and then you coming in and being like, hey, like, let's just be like a little bit more mindful while we're outside of how we are. But then like that kind of offended me because I'm like, to be honest, when you say that, it makes me feel like I'm a fucking gorilla outside. Like I just go out and like cause problems. But I get what you're coming from. But I'm also like, t- I've never. Yeah, no, I apologize about saying that. I didn't. I, didn't, I guess what I meant to say is that <laughs> for the record, what I meant yeah. to say <laughs> is that. Let's just conduct ourselves truthfully. Yeah. If a if a time calls where you need to defend yourself and you need to tell somebody how it is and not how they seen it, because the reality is, is it's not all their way. You know, they're not always right. There's always, you know, your story, my story, and then the truth. And figuring out who is accountable for what is the most important part. Mm-hmm. That's all I promote. Like yeah. us to like live honest and not to kind of say like whatever do you like you know be like nah it's not whatever you hurt my feelings yeah i don't know why you're being like this yeah um i'm more than happy to talk this out with you but it was never my intention to cause you or your dog harm yeah i'm so sorry and this is uncalled for yeah like, can somebody help me out here like you know like please right. like am i crazy here like can we talk about this like but we also live in a time where people like genuinely it, it's 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 fucking but whether or not me. people like listen to you is one thing yeah. i guess the good thing about me that i hold to my heart is that we said it if yeah. you don't listen to it then fine but let that be mm, on the record true. of life that i was out there and i was willing to hear you out if mm-hmm. you heard me out and even yeah. if you didn't at least i told you how i truly felt which is i'm hurt and, and that's i like... want something to to i want to help you help me work this out together and like if they say well dude you're weird go f yourself like i don't what is a therapy session i'd be like well all right i'm sorry then you know what because then if they want to just curse me out even then at least i can say look i you know to to, to me and the man upstairs you know hey i you know what i'm not gonna continue this anymore but i I said what and you tried and i think that's the most important thing and that's the funny thing to me is because like i'm on the other side of that like if somebody were to say that to me like a few years ago i would have been like said exactly that like what is this therapy session so for me to be honest about my feelings like in the moment is very hard and i'm still learning how to do it and (laughs) it's really funny because maya um i pick her up from school sometimes and we are in the we're in the car and i'm driving her home and it's really nice because she always tells me things um she'll say uh well we'll just get to talking normal normal things like how's your day what'd you learn she'll tell me then maybe five ten minutes later once she kind of you know gets gets calmed down into the car she'll say hey like i need to ask you something or i need to tell you something and she told me that there was this girl so she has this really good friend her name's anaya and they hang out a lot and i guess this girl pointed her finger at both of them and then did a thumbs down and to Maya she told me that the girl called her stupid I and I asked did she actually call you stupid or did she just do the thumbs down she said she just did the thumbs down but to her that's what it meant Hmm. and so um it was funny because I just tried to take um like a page out of your notebook like what would you tell Maya you know I asked you know if she was okay and how she felt about it um but instantly my head just wanted to be like, you better tell that girl, da, 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 you know, but that's not going to help. So I was like, next time, you know, maybe you should tell the girl how that made you feel. You know, that that made you feel pretty bad. That made you feel pretty sad. And, and maybe, you know, if the girl didn't didn't do that or maybe ask her why. And I just think that's just not how people do things these days. Everybody just jumps on people so hard. And um, I'm just trying to like interweave that into her head. And I, I don't know. No, I don't know but- what the best thing is to do. But that that um that makes kind of sense in retrospect to why I act the way that I act now mm-hmm. is because I want to lead by example, and I feel as though the interactions that we have with the dog people, with like I don't know people who live in a building who think that you're a delivery boy or that you just are a maid, mm-hmm. um, it's important to speak up and stand up um, when the time calls for it in the moment, and that's the hardest thing to do. Yeah, Uh, because the reality is, is that for me, specifically speaking, 
I don't have, I don't possess the traits that other Hispanics do, right? Like, for instance, uh, you know, there are so many like Hispanics that aren't, that don't look like me. They're really tall, they're light skinned, they're, you know, super, I don't know, attractive, they fit in, you know, very well. And mm-hmm. that, kudos to you, like, that's so dope that you can do that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, straight up, like, as Peruvian as it gets, mm-hmm. like, straight up, like, you know, like, small <laughs> dude, like, super Peruvian face, like, totally kind of like, you know, just quintessential, like, you know, so with that being said, it, it you know, even I, I believe in Peru, like people like to look like me have it really rough. And the lighter their skin color, the more you get doors Easy opened you for it, you, yeah. you know, and people look at you and they assume something and they look at me, they assume something else. And so the reason why I say that is because I feel as though I am paving the way for Maya. Mm-hmm. So when she grows up, maybe, just maybe, if I can conduct myself, I can handle myself and maybe turn a few mentalities another way Mm -hmm. that could help brighten the future for her and um you know uh, any young boys that will grow up and look something like me who come to uh, manhattan and uh i don't know want the same things i wanted and because i did those things now they can piggyback off of it and they can improve it even better Mm -hmm. Just pretty much like what the civil rights movement was. A lot of black men, black women were trailblazers in their fields. It's not as black and white, no pun intended, Mm -hmm. as that was. But, you know, there are stigmas in the workplace. There are stigmas in culture um, that are harder to put your finger on. But they are very there. And they are as defined sometimes as... I don't know, segregation even, you know, it's like verbal mental segregation yeah. and, and you, you feel it. You're not, a, you're not, a, you're not dumb. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you mean you're very in tune with, with people and, you know, looks and body language. And it's just, it's just a sad kind of like feeling sometimes. And I'm always positive, you know, well, we're always positive, but you know, beneath all those, walls you have up when you walk out that door when you come inside it you know it does affect you Mm -hmm. and that's the reality um so that's probably (laughs) some of the answers to all that anger that you maybe have heard in my voice earlier in this podcast but Mm -hmm. the truth is it's just a it's interesting uh time yeah and i mean it's it's just silly things you know like going to (laughs) Sorry, Sam just pointed down and Oreo is back. He's on his back. His high, his legs are just in the air and he's just like chomping on this little boot. Anyways, <laughs> it's just uh, interesting how, you know, our daily routines, daily daily things kind of come up and kind of remind you um, about things that I guess you don't necessarily want to think about, including like your skin color, I guess, you know, as soon as you walk out the door. But it happens and here we are just kind of, I think it's really nice to have a platform to kind of just get things off of our chest to be able to talk about them. And obviously we'll still feel them sometimes, but it's cool to just say like, hey, this happened and I'm moving on. Uh, And I would love to know like too, if like, um, are there other people out there that feel that way? Maybe who aren't Hispanic, but they still feel like they can't really fit in. In certain communities or areas. And it it makes, because the thing is too, is like it makes me, because of that, it makes me low-key socially awkward. Like, I don't know how to talk to people sometimes because I'm just so confused with the situation I'm in. And I don't feel as though I was choosing to willingly go in that situation. I feel as though life kind of pushed me in that situation. I'm trying to push back because I want to be, I don't want to let that frustration and negativity define me and make me a sour person. I want to be a happy person. And it just makes me sad sometimes that these situations come my way. And, you know, I have to deal with that. And I'm not saying that I'm not the problem, too. I'm sure that I didn't handle certain situations in my past that I could have handled better. And I think about that every day whenever I handle a situation like nowadays that I have to handle. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and uh, it's frustrating. Like, I don't know, like, I'll just, you know, going back to situations like that, like, you know, when I was at the gym 
And, you know, there's this dude who was working out on three machines. And I was kind of like, I didn't know he was working on three machines until I worked out on a machine right next to him. He's like, bro, I'm working on that. And I'm like, well, you know, can I, can I work in? And he's like, I don't know. I said, can I, can I use this? You're not using it. He's like, oh, you can work in. And I'm like, in my mind, I don't like working in because I don't like being on somebody else's time. So for people who don't know what working in is. Oh yeah. For a <laughs> yeah, good call for working in is like when you're doing like a superset of something and you need to transition from one workout machine to another workout machine to con- continue that muscle burn um you kind of use both and so when you work in with somebody you're kind of doing your set in between their sets so when they're ready they can jump on to the set that you were just on and you're done so you can the next time they go to their other machine you can jump on which is very (laughs) nerve-wracking yeah which is you know i struggle with anxiety Mm -hmm. i don't like again working on somebody else's time as a personal preference i like Mm -hmm. being on my time you go to the gym you pay good money to go to the gym why do you have to work out on somebody else's time Mm -hmm. and you know i told him like i don't want to work in you're not using it can i i'm just going to use it Mm -hmm. you know not at all confrontational i was just straight up said it exactly how i'm saying it to you and the man comes over and walks over to me taking that as a full-on assault to his like life he comes up to me and he says um he said like something like you know that that that's you know this big words coming from like a, a small dude like you something like that and mm-hmm. i was just like very intimidated like, he was like obviously bigger than me i'm not a big guy he's bigger than me older than me i'm just like oh i you know i, I just spoke from him. i was like oh you think you're a tough guy you know just because you're bigger and than me you're just gonna you know be the quintessential man you know yeah that that's what you're that's just the the solution to your problem is just gonna fight it with physical violence and when (laughs) i I said i swear i said something like that because everyone in the gym was like silent yeah and he looked at me with like the most confused bewildered look because that is not a a response that you get from somebody who looks like me Mm -hmm. you don't get that you get like let's go like i'm a swing first like yeah. We're both can get fucked up here. <laughs> but I'm like, yo, like, one, I have too much to live for. Yeah. Two, you know, I have to get home. People love me. <laughs> this three, this is not mm. worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, you look like a dumbass. Like, I don't know why you're fighting me for something so minuscule. It's just working out in another machine. And this isn't like, this and isn't a got, suburbs machine. Like, you got to understand that the gyms in New York City are fucking tiny. Yeah. You oh, go that's to Minnesota why got upset and it's like giant. There's like five of each machine. Yeah, and that's why he got upset because I questioned him. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't understand why you need to work out on three machines when this is like, you know, this is a community's like it's a tiny place yeah people people a lot of more people pay here like why do i i don't, I don't machines, understand and that's, the time. that's how he took it like offensively and i'm like yeah. it was a genuine question and yeah. anyways he got really confused he didn't know what to do he looked around and then he looked back at me and then he just walked away and ever since then he whenever he walks around me he like there's just like mad tension but does he I, puff up his chest yeah i feel as though he feels like very very embarrassed and i pick up i pick up on it because yeah. he's so like you know when somebody is uncomfortable yeah very sensitive around you mm-hmm. you can feel it in the room you can cut it like a fucking yeah. slice of cake mm-hmm. and that's what i feel like that when he's ever when he's around and it's like it's weird because it's like i bested you and i didn't even mean to i was yeah. just genuinely just being straight up like and not letting you push me around being like you know hey <laughs> go ahead go ahead yeah. like fuck me up all right what's that gonna do for you just gonna end you you just end up in the in the in the the bookings for 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 hurting me for for hurting a dude for for using your jet like dude you're you have a kid man like what are you doing like like i've listened to him too like Talk this about is, his kid. yeah like with huh. some other dude and i'm just like how his kid broke his uh massager using it one time and how like i don't know his son breaks everything and i'm just like bro like this is after this altercation yeah. happens i'm like bro and you have a you have a son like, come on, man. You got to set a better example for him. Like, oh, man, I can't guy. imagine how your son is then. If he yeah. is, that's how he handles his problems. I'm, I know if I have a son, I'm going to teach him definitely to, you know, use his words straight up. And obviously, if there, somebody starts attacking you, then, yes, that will be a different story. But yeah. then use your words. Understand that you, your life is really important. And just pick your battles, man. That's yeah. it. Anyways. <laughs> it's just really funny, like gym gym stories too, because I remember one of the first times, like the first year I was here, um, I was using machine and yeah, somebody wanted to do like a superset or something with me and I told her no. 
like, no, thank you. She had asked if she could work in. She was upset because I was um, texting, but I was, it was less than 10 seconds that I was texting. And I know that because I was just texting my brother, Michael, like super quick. I remember like the conversation, everything is really quick, but because I was looking down at my phone, she got really offended and came up to me and said something and um, about me taking too long or wanting to do a superset. She wanted to work in with me. I just said no. And uh, she had said something really mean. I don't remember specifically what it was at the time, but I remember walking up to you. Because I was in the gym too, right? Yeah, you were in the gym too. And I remember walking up to you. And I just like, this is the funny thing. When I come to you, I just really want to vent half the time. I just want to be like, Sam, this person was so mean. Like they were terrible. And now I feel sad or now I feel mad or whatever the case is, right? And I just want to vent. But you took it to a whole nother level. You're like, who? I'm like, oh. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't I'm like, matter. yo, let's handle your shit now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like oh. let's go. I'm like, yeah, that, that lady over there. I feel like I did say something. You did. You went up to her. But I wasn't, it was like. It wasn't mean. You just said, hey, like, I don't really appreciate the way you talked to her. I don't think you should have said that to her. And I think, um, I don't think you said you owe her an apology, but I, th- I think you just said, you know, next time. Oh, that's what you said. Next time, like, maybe if you didn't say it that way, or maybe you could, <laughs> next time, maybe you could have handled the situation a little bit better. Yeah, and, and it's funny when I say stuff like that because it's the reality, it's mm-hmm. the truth, it's how I'd want somebody to talk to me. Mm-hmm. You end up speechless. Either either you're speechless you. because you you are ad- not willing to admit your wrongdoings because if because the other side of the coin is, hey man, I'm so I'm so sorry. No, you know what? You're completely right. You're completely right. I had a I had a bad day. My daughter, you know, she's just. You know, sure, she's not having a good time with her husband right now. And I'm just like, I'm really frustrated because I don't know what's going to happen. She lives with him. And uh, and I'm like, hey, yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. For, like, this is what I would say to that. Like, be like, yo, thank you so much for letting me know. I am so sorry. You have to, like, oh, my God. Like, mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I came at you hard. Like, yeah, I, I you know, you know, my, my partner here, you know, like, you know, she, she was hurt. She was really hurt. And, yeah. and I'm so like, oh, man, like, I am so sorry. Like, oof. all right. Like, you know what? all forgiven yeah like super good. yeah like you know <laughs> like that yeah that's like that's how i wish you know and, and i i believe you know as somebody who's like a dreamer and wants to have their dreams fulfilled that's the kind of world that i want to live in mm-hmm. and so all these interactions i'm trying to slowly kind of even though it's like maybe an undreamable dream like it's not going to make me stop dreaming mm-hmm. the positive silver lining dream of just having people just be family to you mm-hmm. especially in your community just being like just talking to you realer instead of like with these shields and these like you know egos and and the unwillingness to admit the wrong just like just hear me like just trust me trust me i'm never going to hurt you your ego by admitting to me that uh, your things you could have done better like i'm all i want is for everybody to do better to to to, to handle situations better for mm-hmm. the betterment of both people so they can feel like they don't have to hold on to that being like yeah. i told him this and he should have known better like mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah like being like no you don't want that you want you want to be cool with him you want to be like oh we got mad and then we talked it out and yeah dude's my friend we're gonna actually go to the gym tomorrow yeah. like i think the underlining thing is to just be honest um yeah. and to be vulnerable and, and obviously that's not easy for anybody especially especially me um <laughs> Just think you are. Oh, busted. <laughs> I just, I had that, I had that, I just had to say it, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, like you're saying, it's just the underlining theme of everything is if we were all just a little bit more honest and a little bit more vulnerable with the people around us, understanding that what we might say might, you know, might not get the best reaction, but as long as we're honest about the things we say, the things we do, then, you know, we can only look at each other and hold each other accountable and just say, all right, like I, I genuinely I did my best and um, the situation maybe didn't turn out as well or they got even mad or whatever the case is, being able to be like grown up enough to kind of walk away and just, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, and feel confident in your part, whether, you know, let alone, you know, whether or not somebody else can feel the same walking away from that situation. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I think I feel pretty fulfilled with uh, this talk today. Me too. It was funny because earlier you had come in and you're very serious about um 
you know, us going to take Oreo to the park every single time together. And then we started off on this rant of, like, getting into, like, the colors and, like, different skin colors and the dog park and the situations that we've been in. And I was like, hey, can we just, can we just save this for later? Because it's really nice to be able to sit down and have a conversation. You know, our phones aren't getting in the way. Finally, Oreo's, like, sleeping. <laughs> yeah, right, when we're wrapping up. <laughs> right, when we're wrapping up. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's nice to have this platform to just talk about life. Yeah, and if you guys have any kind of stories that relate to us or different, but, you know, share the same overlying theme, you know, I'd really love for you guys to reach out to us, and uh, we'd love to hear your story, um, maybe even have you on in the future. Who yeah. knows? Definitely open to that. And, you know, with that being said, uh, I think we'll conclude this episode and see you guys on next week's episode. It's time for dinner. Yeah. Oh, I need a I need a uh, a sample that's a dinner 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 or like you know dinner time or some or some like you know what you I'll, need I'll, to get it from um like a like a commercial with the the TV dinners oh yeah aren't they have like the brolic like announcement hungry man yeah dinner <laughs> is served yeah something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this this it will be improved uh, so stay tuned guys <laughs> next week sound bites yeah for real <laughs> all right guys well it was a pleasure. And we will see you next time. Bye. Peace.